A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we hold this treasure in earthen vessels, that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. We are, we are afflicted in every way, but not constrained, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being given up to death for the sake of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since then, we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We too believe and therefore speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Verbum Domini.
Dominus Fabiscum. Lectio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Matteum. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. Verbum Domini. Before we begin, just a quick note. Masses will be televised from the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament for the week of October 17th only. Masses will then be televised from the chapel at EWTN in Irondale, Alabama thereafter. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the close of the age. Today in the gospel, Jesus instructs his apostles to go forth, to proclaim the gospel, to make disciples of all nations, and to baptize them. This passage, the Great Commission, found in St. Matthew's Gospel, underpins a number of the Church's beliefs about herself. Consequently, having been sent out by Christ on mission to the whole of the human race, the Church, we know, is Catholic or universal, which is one of the four marks of the Church. In like manner, as the convocation or assembly of all men for salvation. The church in her very nature is missionary, sent by Christ to all the nations to make disciples of them. Hence the church, excuse me, hence the church is called to preach the gospel to all peoples of every time and place and to make disciples of them all. We see this lived out in a special way in the lives of those men whose feast day we celebrate today. Today in the United States of America, we celebrate the glorious feast day of Saints John de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogues and their companions. Saints Anthony, Daniel, Gabriel Lalament, Charles Garnier, Noel Chabanel, René Goupil, and Jean de Lalande. These French Jesuit and Oblate missionaries were martyred in what is now Arisville, New York, in the 17th century, between 1642 and 1649, for attempting to carry out Christ's mandate to preach the gospel to the Hurons and Iroquois of North America. This group of eight Jesuit missionaries battled some of the most difficult living conditions imaginable and died under the most gruesome tortures ever conceived. In fact, even taking into account the early martyrs of the church, The tortures these men suffered can be considered some of the most barbaric and demonic-like 
tortures of any of those suffered by any of the martyrs in the history of the church. All of this they suffered out of their love for Christ. They believed in the call of their vocations to serve Christ and his church, no matter how difficult. And they loved God and their neighbor to such an extent that they were willing to give their lives for them. None of this, however, could ever have been accomplished without God's grace and providence. Interesting to note, as has been revealed by their hagiographers, 10 years after the martyrdom of St. Isaac Jogues, Kateri Tekakwitha was born in the same village in which he died. He was canonized in 1930. She, the lily of the Mohawks, was beatified 50 years later and subsequently canonized in 2012. As Tertullian correctly wrote with great insight in 197 AD, the blood of martyrs is the seed of the church. In this case, where the blood of one saint watered the ground, another saint, a lily, in this case, blossomed. We celebrate the feast day of Saint Kateri Tekakwitha on July 14th every year. Each of these eight Jesuit martyrs has his own unique background and story. One that stands out among the others who we don't often hear about as Saint Noel Chabanel. He was not like his fellow Jesuits in that he did not have the same adaptability as they did to the conditions and the ways of the natives of North America. He could not learn the language and found everything, including the food, revolting. And on top of this, God tried him by spiritual dryness during his whole stay in North America. So both physically and spiritually suffered. Yet he stayed the course. And as his biographers tell us, he made a solemn vow in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament to remain until death in this mission, which his nature abhorred. He stayed the course and became a martyr at the hands of an apostate Catholic. Saint Noel and his companions teach us by word and mostly by example to remain steadfast in the faith until the end, no matter what, regardless of what others are doing around us, no matter who they are or what they may be doing to us or saying about us, remembering always to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. No one can destroy my relationship with Christ except for me, even if it were to cost me my life. No one can destroy my relationship with Jesus Christ except for me. In these uncertain days, it does us good to take heart what Jesus promised in today's gospel, which is also the last recorded words of Jesus found in St. Matthew's gospel. Jesus said, and behold, I am with you always to the close of the age. No matter how dark it may seem, Jesus will always be with us, for he is always faithful, he who always keeps his promises.